What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics, and today we got a reaction to Grant Lee Buffalo Top 10 Songs, brought to us by a friend, longtime supporter, patron of the channel, Slade Said. Thank you, Slade Said. Appreciate everything you bring. Always educate me. Always enjoy it. Appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. We couldn't do it without you if you like sports in any way. Check out that Patreon link below, the patron link on the end screen. We can do some pretty cool stuff for you. All right. All right. Let's get into the quick facts. Slade Said knows a lot about, Slade Said knows a lot about a lot of music, but uh, for my April list, I decided to make a top 10 list for the Los Angeles trio Grant Lee Buffalo, who released four albums in the 90s. This band is, to me, one of the more extreme cases where a band with an incredibly gifted songwriter composer for some reason didn't become giants, even if they surely had plenty of songs with huge hit potential, at least within the rock listening audience. So I decided this band deserved some more exposure and selected 10 great songs from their studio albums, which was more difficult than it may sound considering it's not a major catalog, but they really have a lot of great songs to choose between. So I could easily have made a top 20 and the difference in quality between the songs was simply pretty much non-existent. If you like the 10 songs I picked and I expect anyone with a good ear for a good catchy melody to love these songs, then I definitely suggest you check out the albums as there are plenty more great songs to find. Just a short band biography before we begin. Grant Lee Buffalo was formed in 1991 from the ashes of the trio Shiva Burlesque, who released two albums. The bassist quit the band and was replaced by Paul Kimball, and the new trio decided to start over as a new band, and so Grant Lee Buffalo was formed. The main songwriter and composer in the band was guitarist and lead vocalist Grant Lee Phillips, while the final person to make up the trio was drummer Joey Peters. The band toured as an opening act for bands such as Pearl Jam and R.E.M., and Grant Lee Phillips actually was rewarded with Male Vocalist of the Year Award by Rolling Stone magazine in 1994, but none of this propelled them into stardom. They released their debut album, Fuzzy, in 1993, and their final album, Jubilee, in 1998. It's really a short, uh, yeah, so it was a pretty short-lived band. Bass player Paul Kimball left the band before their last album, and bass dudes were taken over by session musician Dan Rothschild. Following the breakup of the band, Grant Lee Phillips embarked on a solo singer-songwriter career, while Joey Peters has been involved with alt-country rock band Rusty Truck. All right, so... Let's, uh, let's jump into this. If you haven't been with us before, the music will not be in the video, but it will be at a Vimeo link below. So follow along with this. All right. Number 10, we got The Hook from the Fuzzy album in 1993. Slade said, our first spot on the list is taken from their debut album, The Hook. It's a great acoustic ballad showcasing Grant Lee's great voice and flair for melodies. And speaking of this album, Fuzzy, Michael Stipe, we already talked about them open for REM, REM said that it was the best album of the year, hands down. I praise. I'm going to have the lyrics up as always. Thanks again, Slade Said. All right, The Hook, Grant Lee Buffalo. I have a feeling this list is going to be right up my alley. I loved that. I love the melody. I loved his voice. You know, and that's the thing, man. You get into these artists that I don't really know. And I mean, if you don't love the voice, it's going to be hard to love the list. It just is what it is, guys. I mean, there's still endearing qualities in it, whether it's the, the lyrics or the arrangement of the musicianship. But when you when it hits with you and you know really right, we know the second we hear a vocalist like that hit with me. That was fantastic. He's, he's advising the person that this hook, it's the hook that drags you, the hook in the crook of your neck. It's the hook that snags you. And there's one thing I tell you, friend, all our trials are going to come to an end and you and I were going to fall like we never have stood on this little earth at all. So I'm not sure what the hook is. I don't know if it's like this guy won't fall in love and he's trying to tell his friend that's what you got to do because right before but you're so afraid to look at love, got to let it all go, this cut above stuff. So I don't know, maybe that he can't love and so that's going to be his downfall, but I don't know, but I'll tell you what, it was fantastic. Next up, Eight Mile Road. I only know one Eight Mile Road and that's that's with Eminem with Mr. Marshall Mathers, but that isn't this one. It's off the Jubilee album in 1998. Slade said we moved from the first album to the final album. Remember, there's only four. And add some electricity to the guitars on this one, but it's still unmistakably Grant Lee Buffalo with another catchy melody. All right, Eight Mile Road. Great guitar work on here, both electric and acoustic, and I like the blending of that. Uh, the keyboard in there was nice too. Grant Lee sounds really good. Uh, the, the idea of the song is basically, I think this, this girl's gone and he's asking her to hurry home down that Eight Mile Road. Um, but yeah, I mean, great sound here. Uh, sticks in the head. Different style. Different style a little bit, a little more, more upbeat, a little more electric, as Slade said, mentioned. I prefer the hook more, but this song was still really good. Up to number eight, Lone Star song from Mighty Joe Moon in 1994. Slade said the album Mighty Joe Moon was Grant Lee Buffalo's second album and by many regarded as their best. I seem to recall that Trey had it on his top five list of 1994. So 
We did an album draft, if you don't know, on the channel from 1965 through 2022. Trey and I each drafted five albums from each year that uh, we thought were the best. So I don't know why I didn't listen to Grant Lee Buffalo through that journey. Because I listened to just a ton of artists. Somehow I just didn't. But I, I obviously traded it. I personally can't decide, so said, between this album and Jubilee. But both the albums are amazing rock albums. Well, let's start song was the album opener. And what a way to start an album. I will be honest and say that sometimes I think this is their best song. So this was a tough one to make. This list was a tough one to make, obviously, because this is number eight. Sometimes he thinks it's their best song. Uh, I found Grant Lee Phillips once said he originally intended the song to be about conspiracy theories concerning the assassination of John F. Kennedy, which happened about 20 minutes behind me right down the road in Dallas. But he got a little carried away with the events of the Waco siege and the song evolved, which Waco, I think, was 1993. The Branch Davidians, David Koresh. It's an insane thing. There's a documentary on Netflix right now, but Paramount made a TV series about it maybe three, four years ago. Uh, I lived through it. It was just a crazy time. So I'll be curious to see what these lyrics uh, have for me here. Lone Star Song. Well, I remember when you get into it, it's really all about Koresh and the Branch Davidians and Waco, right? There's just a little shout out to D. Lee Plaza. And there were, of course, John F. Kennedy was, was killed. And there's about 100 miles between D. Lee Plaza and where Koresh's place was at. So they were smelling the smoke coming in and a little shout out to Ma Reno, Janet Reno here, but it's a really good song, man. The, the soundscape of this was fantastic. Grant Lee had a very powerful, powerful vocal performance on that one. So yeah, really good. All right, number seven, we got Change Your Tune off the Jubilee album once again in 1998. Remember, it was their last one. Uh, Slate said this is another great mid-paced rock song, which Jubilee is packed with. All right, Change Your Tune. He's basically telling this person, that uh, they're very negative and they need to change their tune, right? Right now, you could change a tune. Right now, you could use a change of tune. Right now, no one needs it more than you. I know everyone is wicked once you change your tune. So he kind of just goes on. But the way he says, right now, I mean, you know, obviously I just murdered it. But the way he gets that higher octave and then he goes back. This really made it. The more he did it, the more it just stuck in your head. And I mentioned earlier, I really like Grant Lee Phillips' vocals. But Grant Lee Phillips also plays the guitar. And there's some fantastic guitar work, not only on this song, but on all of this so far. Up to number six, we got the bridge from Copperopolis from 1996. Uh, Slade said at number six, we find the sole inclusion of the song from their third album, Copperopolis. Copperopolis, what a, what a thing to say. Which to me is their weakest album. That does not mean it's a bad album, however far from it. And there were a handful of songs I consider for this list, such as the lead single, Homespun. But in the end, I decided to go with the bridge. And he makes a great point here because we get this all the time. We do song rankings and stuff like that. Or, like, oh, I can't believe you didn't like this. Well, no, just because it's lower, maybe everything's great. We did the Beatles album rankings list and people were having a fit over certain things. It's like, it doesn't mean this is bad. It's just there's so much high quality that you can't pick at all. The bridge. He starts out talking about a literal bridge, sort of. It's metaphorically. And they get into him and this, this girl, I'm assuming, have their own bridge to cross, right? They got to get through a bunch of things. And I'll tell you how you know when an artist is really good. Like when the song started, I thought, this is fine. And the longer it went, the more I liked it. And I found that on a few of these songs on here. That's how you know an artist is really good and the song is very well constructed. So, uh, yeah, you and me have one bridge to cross. Weather-worn and sea tossed. We have our own bridge to cross. Let's not make any excuses. So I thought that was the best verse in there. All right, let's go to the top half of this list. We got Truly Truly from Jubilee in 1998. Remember the last one, last album. For a number five spot, so I'd say we once again return to the Jubilee album. I selected the ballad and lead single, Truly, Truly, here. Now, I always do my own research, but Slade Sled's research is fantastic. There's just not much on Grant Lee Buffalo, but there is on this song and the next one. So I found this went to 11 on the Billboard Modern Rock charts. According to Grant Lee Buffalo drummer Joey Peters, he's doing a fantastic job. I haven't brought Joey up. He and Grant Lee Phillips began working on this song in 1996 while they were touring with the Smashing Pumpkins. As Phillips and Peters began demoing tracks for what would become the Jubilee album, Bassist and producer Paul Kimball did not participate because Peters recalled, quote, it was kind of obvious he was in a different space musically and creatively. Kimball left the group the following year. Phillips explained in a 1998 Musician Magazine article that Truly Truly began with the bass part. And then it was just a matter of setting that to a metronome and then filling in the chords around it, finding you could set majors or minors to whatever melody is being played in the bass. The song's tone changes, Phillips said, have to do with running through different amplifiers, including a Marshall JCM 900 and a Vox AC30. Phillips added the guitar part was played straight through, but recorded all the amps on separate tracks, giving it us up to four very distinctive sounds to manipulate during the mix. I just thought that was 
really interesting. You know, once you get this little bird's eye view, you don't understand the complexity that goes into making a lot of these songs. Truly, truly. Once he came on with that chorus part, the change up, oh my goodness, man. It's just fantastic. You also had a uh, Rami Jaffe on the organ and Andrew Williams is in there with those additional vocals that you hear coming in there. You had a tambourine, a shaker also with the drums with Joey Peters. He's handling all the percussion on that, but that song was really, really good. I mean, they've all been good. That song, I'm telling you, man, truly, truly, I want you. So he's, uh, he's basically just telling her that he wants this girl. It's been a little bit too long since they've been together, but, uh, wow. Next up, we have Mockingbirds from that Mighty Joe Moon album in 1994. It was the second single of the album. Now, I found quite a bit on this one, too, so I'm just going to share it with you. American Songwriter is a magazine. I mean, it's all online. They do some really good interviews and some really good breakdown stuff. But uh, they had said they think this song could be considered the most memorable of Grant Lee Buffalo's career. As Grant Lee Phillips, the band's lead singer and songwriter, recently told American Songwriter, the song was a last-minute addition to the band's second album. He said, quote, By the time we got to the second album, we'd been on the road almost every day the previous year. We sort of looked at each other and said, it feels like it's time to make a record. What are we doing next? And we dove into it. That being the case, there were songs that were still coming along, songs that I'd written, some out on the road, some on the off day. But Mockingbird wasn't, Mockingbirds wasn't one of those songs. I began to introduce all the new material and we had gotten through most of the recording process when a massive earthquake struck Los Angeles. This was the Northridge earthquake. And it was out of that that I wrote Mockingbirds when the record was basically almost done. I said, whoops, I got one more here we might want to consider. Now, Phillips lost his home in that earthquake. He said, quote, my wife and I lived up in the high desert, maybe a 15 minute drive from the epicenter of Northridge. So we felt it really strong. We spent the next number of weeks at my parents' house then managed to fly back into LA and slept on a friend's floor for several weeks as Grant Lee Buffalo worked on the final stages of the album. I didn't have much with me, my wife and I had our cat and I had my guitar and my banjo. I was sitting on the floor as the aftershocks rolled and began to write Mockingbirds on the banjo. The sentiment of the lyrics is that I've done everything I can possibly do to stay on the straight and narrow. I tried to toe the line and yet life has caught up to me anyhow. And I suppose that's a feeling that all of us can relate to regardless. Pick the cataclysm of your choice. That's where it's coming from. Although when you stop and consider lyrics like devastation at last, finally we meet. Phillips said he initially had to convince his bandmates of the song's worth. He said, quote, to tell you the truth, that song very, very nearly didn't make the record. I brought that song in and I was told, we've already got 13 songs and a few of them aren't going to make the record because it's going to be too long. Do we really have to bother with recording one more? And I said, yes, we do. I feel really strongly about this one. It amazes me I still get so many requests for it. I would have thought that even among our fans who are so loyal and wonderful that they would have tired of it by now. But there are always a few more that haven't heard it or longed to hear it. And I must say, it's a satisfying song to play. So I know that's a long, but I just thought it was a really cool story behind this one. Let's get after it. That upper register on there is just fantastic. And I'm not going to read the lyrics to it because I just told you the story of the song. But uh, I can see why why some people think it's their, their best song. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought the... The arrangement of it fit just perfectly with the lyricism. You know, we weren't going hardcore into it, but it wasn't a ballad either. But uh, the vocal performance is the star there and the melody. All right, next up at number three, we got Testimony, also from the Jubilee album in 1998, their last. Slade said we entered the top three with yet a song, another song from the Jubilee album. But it's also the last from that album on the list. I don't want to I don't want to break the suspense here for you, but it's the last one from here. Testimony is a song which particularly blossoms in the chorus part. Such a wonderful song. Testimony. So Grant Lee is a guy who's having a hard time and he feels like he keeps letting this person down. Every time I turn around, feels as I've let you down, always something else. And every time I turn around, feels as so I've let you down, but I can't outrun myself. And so I uh, had some great lyricism here, the hook on here, the catchiness. And I'll tell you what, he's really good at doing the way he delivers the songs, right? It brings the melody through because he starts off, uh, he does this on several of the songs and the verses. He takes a long time getting through that first verse and then boom, change tempo, kick through it really quickly. It causes it to really stick in your head, man, and then dials it back. It's just, 
It's a fantastic way to write a really catchy song. All right, we still got two songs left. We got Rock of Ages. No, not that one, Def Leppard fans, from Mighty Joe Moon in 1994. At number two, we find the final selection from Mighty Joe Moon. There's also the final track of the album. Rock of Ages is an incredible acoustic battle with some lyrics that somehow always get to me. Uh Oh, man, this one's setting up to be uh, something for me. I think this song is quite simply an extraordinary piece of acoustic folk rock with Grant Lee sounding his best while the music encapsulates the spirit of the lyrics. A masterpiece. This song is already on my favorites list from that description. I haven't even heard it. Wow, that song was fantastic. I mean, I knew it was going to be. Slade said, like I said, knows a ton about music. When they say something, I'm like, yeah, that's going to be, you can you can write it down. That was, uh, yeah, that was fantastic. Grant Lee's voice. The song itself, I mean, the lyricism is so good. Rock of Ages, I'm tumbling down where the roots of trees embrace you. I do fall upon my knees and ask you how you can just sit there and be. Rock of Ages, I'm crumbling now. I'm in an avalanche. I'm reaching, reaching for the Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, Father, now I've stepped beyond my bounds. Now the pack I wear, it weighs a thousand pounds. It drags me down, make me think crazy. Then I heard my brother call. I turned the other way. Now I'm ashamed to face it. I mean, this song... I mean, everything about this song is just unbelievable. I really can't believe that Slade said picked anything ahead of this, but I haven't heard the number one song yet. Well, I actually have, but I don't remember it. We got number one, Jupiter and Teardrop from the Fuzzy album in 1993. Slade said, okay, so we reached number one. This is actually a song I've had on a top 10 list before with you both reacting to it, me and Trey. And I believe you both chose it as one of your favorites on the list. And I can easily see why. Since it's another song where the music totally matches the lyrics, but as opposed to Rock of Ages, this is definitely a rock song. So I don't remember this. I did remember the name Grant Lee Buffalo, so that explains it. I have had one listen. All right, Jupiter and Teardrop. I didn't remember this. This song is fantastic. Jupiter, because her name's Jupiter, just a girl who can't say no, and her sweetheart on parole. So immediately Grant Lee sets the tone, right? Parents named her Jupiter to bless her with a lucky soul. He's a boy who never cried when they locked him up inside. Uh Uh-oh, I mean, I have a daughter. I don't want her dating this guy. And she nicknamed him Teardrop for the tattoo by his eye, which usually means you've killed somebody. Now she's sleeping in her bed, and he's sleeping in her bed. And it's Jupiter and Teardrop. The change-ups on here, the instrumentation, the guitar work by Grant Lee. Uh, And then she's listening to the radio, right? She forgets after a while when she tunes on the dial. Jackie Wilson's lonely Teardrops, and she drives another mile. Now he's sleeping in her bed. She's sleeping in her bed. Verse five, and that they, they want to have a child walk together down the aisle, but the world they live in is mean and it's built on sheer denial. Then verse six, uh oh, right, teardrops going back, right? The phone rings, it's for her. Gotta see you, Jupiter. I'm in trouble with the law. Bring my 38 caliber. Now she's sleeping in her bed and she pulls the phone plug dead, dead. So, boys and girls, back in the day, I got one right here. We didn't have one of these, right? We didn't have one of these. So, we had a phone that you plugged into the wall. And if you didn't want people to reach you, you just unplugged it from the wall, which was a beautiful thing. You didn't realize it at the time, but now you sure do realize when people can find you wherever, whenever. Uh, so she unplugged the phone. So she was done with him, right? She was walking away from teardrops. So now she's sleeping in her bed. She pulls the phone plug dead, dead, instead of he sleeping in the bed. So she's done with him. So hopefully he doesn't come after her, but what a great song. Now we're gonna get to the very difficult task of picking my favorite tracks. Now, I will tell you, Grant Lee Phillips is fantastic as a vocalist, as a lyricist, uh, and, and as a guitar player, right? And then Paul Kimball, I never brought up the bass. The bass work on here was good. It's just in this style of music, the bass work is not going to come over here and stand out most of the time in Joey Peters on the drums. But uh, what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight of the 10 make my, sorry. You know, when we started doing these top 10 lists years ago now, uh, Trey and I always decided we're going to pick our three favorites. It, it's just, it just can't happen on lists like this. There's not three, right? So honorable mention is going to be Lone Star Song, The Bridge. Yeah. Faves are going to be the very first song, The Hook, uh, Truly, Truly, Mockingbirds, Testimony, and then, of course, these last two, Rock of Ages and Jupiter and Teardrop. I think Rock of Ages is better, I guess. Man, I don't know. I got that Jupiter and Teardrop running through my head, right? I, I don't know. I don't know which one is better. But let me know what you think of this list. And which one of those songs is better, right? What else should I check out? I'm going to have to run these albums at some point in my in my free time. I don't have a lot of that. But uh, 
Great, great list by Slade Said, as always. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. Until next time, I will see you.